again, as of right now, three games separate six teams from the top spot in the Western Conference. We're here to try to sort some of this out and fill us in on some other storylines as NBA clubs hit the final stretch run. Vincent Thomas from Slam Magazine. Vincent, let's start with the West. What's the atmosphere like right now in the conference? Well, um, it's getting bloody out there. I think that it's interesting that uh, Boston and Detroit are talking about um, resting their starters and meanwhile you have a game like the Phoenix Denver game a couple of days ago where there were 10 technical fouls uh, all together six coming uh, from Phoenix who are, are usually you know uh, described as nuns by by a lot of insiders <laughs> and um, Mike D'Antoni he had an interesting quote he said that these games are like playoff games right now they are playoff games he said they're not regular season games and that it's do or die for everybody and I think that's why you see a team like Phoenix have uh, 11 technical fouls over the past three games. Um, the, the contentious relationship between the players and the referees, you're starting to see that a couple weeks early uh, because everything, because the stakes are so high for, for the Western teams right now. Endurance will pay off. We're going to go out east now. The Sixers, 7-3 and three over their last 10 games, certainly one of the East's hottest teams right now. What are they crediting for their success? Well, for one, I, I talked to Ed Stefanski the other day, and he credited uh, surprisingly Billy King uh, as being part of this equation because of the, the amount of talent that he amassed, the, especially the young talent. And he said what really all they needed to do you know, to, to bring about the success that they've seen recently is they needed to sit down and establish an identity because most losing teams usually don't have an identity. And uh, Philly's identity now is that they're a fast-paced team or full of young athletes and they're resilient. They've had um, a few really impressive come from behind victories. And um, the two people in the organization right now that Stefanski credits uh, the most are uh, Andre Miller, because at every fast pace, you know, fast breaking team needs a point guard. And he makes everybody around him better. He's been doing really well with the young players. And then Stefanski thinks that Mo Cheek should get some coach of the year consideration for how he's been able to right this ship amidst you know some of the turmoil that was going on earlier in the season and Stefanski being a Philly guy he really sees some of the buzz coming back around the 76ers now so so it's a great thing in Philly. NBA Commissioner David Stern uh, was in a Time Magazine article recently and he was pretty emphatic in the idea of moving that NBA age minimum from 19 to 20 and you talked with the commissioner recently what did he say to you about it? Well he said that it was basically uh, an honest answer to a direct question uh, that came about, you know, in, in that time interview a couple months ago. But still, his candor was, was you know, kind of curious because the collective bargaining agreement isn't up until 2011. And that age minimum of 19, that was one of the last issues off the table. That was a very um, contentious compromise. The NBA wanted 20 at the previous collective bargaining agreement, um, and, and the players wanted 18. But Stern said that he's not losing any sleep over it, that everything is always in negotiation, and maybe they'll get it, maybe they won't. Also, globalizing the game has been a real topic that he's focused on. What did he have to say about that moving forward? Well, he has almost what's like a stump quote where he says that uh, every year that passes, there's more elite athletes bouncing the ball as opposed to kicking it. And what's that, what that's doing is it's bringing about so much competition for the you know 400 or so jobs that are in the NBA right now. And he thinks that the 32, he says anywhere between 28 and 32 teams um, are what you need domestically. And the NBA really is looking at their globalization uh, with some immediacy now. He, he sees some teams being overseas uh, within about 10 years. And, you know, he just brought up a rhetorical question. Do you think that Yao Ming and Yi are going to be the only elite af basketball athletes to come out of a country of 1.3 billion? Do you think that Dirk Nowitzki is, is going to be the only German to ever play, you know, in the NBA? So. You know, it sucks right now if you're in Seattle, but it's looking good if you're in, like, London or Paris or Madrid or what have you. It's the way the world changes. Vincent, oh, definitely. thank you. Vincent uh, Thomas from Slam no Magazine. Problem, Sage? Right. To the NFL.